All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. It's hour number two, Thursday edition of the Steve Malzberg Show. Um, I want to take this opportunity because uh, I'm going to be off uh, for the next uh, couple of days, Friday and then Monday. I'll return on Tuesday uh, to wish all of you a very meaningful uh, Memorial Day. And, uh, you know, I hearken back to Barack Obama. It might have been his first Memorial Day as president or his second Memorial Day as president. I would hope it was his first when he gave a, a speech on Memorial Day and said, I see some of our fallen heroes in attendance here today. I see some of our fallen heroes in attendance here today. I don't have to tell you how bizarre and outrageous that is. Um, I, I believe the man didn't know the difference between Memorial Day, Veterans Day. I don't, I don't think he knew. I don't think it, it meant anything to him. I really, I really do. You, I'm being honest. How else do you say that? How else do you say I, I, fallen heroes are, are dead soldiers who made the ultimate sacrifice? You see some of them here today? Uh, it, it, mind-boggling, mind-boggling. Um, and, 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 and now let's bring it up to date just a little bit. Uh, Barack Obama delivered the uh, keynote address at the uh, United States Coast Guard Academy yesterday. I want to skip ahead here to the second cut, which is, uh, what did I say? It was going to be 60, whatever, not 61, the one after it. And, and here's what Barack Obama said to them. After all, isn't that the true hallmark of leadership? When you're on deck, standing your watch, you stay vigilant. You plan for every contingency. And if you see storm clouds gathering or dangerous shoals ahead, you don't sit back and do nothing. You take action to protect your ship, to keep your crew safe. Anything less is negligence. It is a dereliction of duty. Yeah, you know what he's talking about? Climate change. That's right. One of the greatest threats to the future of our security and the security of the world, climate change. What can I say? We know who he is by now. The sad part is that I know who he was before he was elected the first time. We all know who he wa knew who he was before he was elected the second time. Now he's got unfettered time to do whatever he wants with a stroke of a pen. And believe me, you ain't seen nothing yet. Have a great Memorial Day. And uh, remember those who gave their lives so that we could be here doing what we do every day. I want you to watch this uh, from the Ferguson protest, and we're going to talk about it. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! We got to fight back! 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 Fight back. All right, there you go, folks. A uh, little uh, oldie but goodie, as they say, uh, from Ferguson. And joining us now with uh, what really should be a shocking story, unfortunately it's not shocking, but it's outrageous, is Matthew Vadum, investigative reporter, author of Subversion, Inc., how Obama's acorn red shirts are still terrorizing and ripping off American taxpayers. Uh, Matthew, welcome. Good to talk to you again. Thank uh, you. you. Good to you, be here. You wrote a piece uh, for frontpagemag.com mag, front talking about the uh, renta mobs and how mo a lot of these people that we see protesting are actually getting paid. That's right. That's right. A lot of the, what you've seen on TV, the agitation in Ferguson, Missouri, uh, in the wake of the death of Michael Brown last year, uh, has been bought and paid for by George Soros and and right now party and other parties perhaps unknown. Uh, it came to light when uh, the Acorn successor group in Ferguson, Missouri, called Missourians Organizing for Reform and Empowerment, that that was the Acorn, Missouri chapter. Uh, when uh, this group and the, its uh, uh, a, a group that it was uh, d organizing the protests with, called Organization for Black Struggle, when they stiffed these paid protesters, and there's one thing you don't do, <laughs> you don't hire protesters and to go and pretend <laughs> that there's a public groundswell and then stiff them. Yeah, that's a very bad idea, and it's who you know who do you cheer for? They're both, they're both <laughs> both sides are bad people, so. Uh, but, but anyway, the, 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 this, the, the point is that this uh, mass hysteria that was whipped up by these Black Lives Matter people 
who are now endorsing something called Black Spring. They want it to be like an Arab Spring, a, a, a period of upheaval. And uh, they're promising a long, hot summer uh, filled with protests and no doubt um, violence. Um, that a lot of what you have seen in terms of public uh, support in the streets uh, for uh, the Black Lives Matter movement is is fictional. Uh, it, it's just bought and paid for. It's generated by people who want, who have a vested interest in causing chaos. So, like so Matthew, just uh, so a George Soros, for instance, would pay this group and then the group would pay the protesters? Is that how it would work? Or, or is it some way to pay the individual protesters this $5,000 per month? Well, we don't know if it was Soros money that went to, to, that specific, to the protest right. for hire uh, uh, operation in Ferguson, Missouri. And no doubt it's in other places too, like Baltimore, and I'm sure evidence will surface soon. Uh, but Soros gave money to all sorts of groups, um, about $33 million in all, according to the uh, a really uh, great article in the Washington Times a few uh, weeks or months back. And these groups, uh, he knew what he was doing. These are troublemaking groups. And one of the groups that he gave money to through his philanthropy, uh, he's got two of them, Open Society Institute, and the other one's uh, um, Endowment um, or Foundation to Promote Open Society. He's not very original when it comes up with names for his philanthropies. Uh, put more Missourians organizing for reform and empowerment on its payroll. So, uh, yeah, I guess you could say that Soros money is, has been directly funding these violent uh, protests. And George Soros is quite happy with, uh, with chaos. Uh, uh, he, he likes it. This is a man who's overthrown uh, governments uh, all around the world and, uh, and is widely despised for good reason. And of course, now we also, uh, this is a little off, uh, off topic, but uh, it fits in in a way. Um, we, we understand that Jay-Z has been uh, bailing out uh, protesters who have been arrested. Right. A, 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 one of the uh, protesters uh, started bragging on Twitter and then he took it down after a while, but the damage was already done because his tweets had somebody had made pictures of them, screen grabbed them. Uh, he said that Beyonce, the singer, and her uh, husband, Jay-Z, uh, real name Sean Carter, I think, uh, they're worth a, more than a billion dollars together, that they have been wiring money to Ferguson, Missouri, uh, to get, uh, I think, Baltimore, uh, was the accusation in that case, uh, that they were sending money to help get protesters out of jail and back on the streets and, you know, rioting and looting and, you know, setting fires and throwing uh, bags of excrement at police officers, you know, the usual sort of thing that the left does. I, when I, wonder, if Jay, I wonder if next time Jay-Z's at a, a, a Nets game uh, and he needs uh, the police escort in and out to keep people away from him, uh, I wonder uh, maybe the, maybe the cops should... Uh, should, uh, you know, have to go to the bathroom or something. Yeah, or turn their back on him like they did to Mayor <laughs> Bill de Blasio. Not to say he'd get hurt, Jay-Z, but he wouldn't get the special treatment uh, from, from the let cops. Him, let him hire his own bodyguards. No, that, I'm a, sure he has them, he's too. He's got the money. All right, Ma Matthew, uh, great work. Uh, and and uh, this, is, this is outrageous. And this is, you know, when Obama's out of office, this is the kind of stuff he could uh, go run for Soros. Well, if I like to say if President Obama weren't president, he would be out in the streets right now of Baltimore uh, trying to stir things up. This is, he's a professional agitator and a master well, now community he gets organizer. To, but now he gets to do that from the White House with, with the bully pulpit. So, uh, you know, six of one, half dozen of the other, only this one is uh, much more powerful and meaningful for him. Matthew, thank you. Right. Appreciate thank it. You. All right, folks, we're coming back, and, and this is interesting. You know, the mayor of Baltimore today lamenting the fact that the murders are up, shootings are up. What, what did she think was going to happen when she trumped up charges that maybe don't even exist uh, against police officers? Anyway, uh, contributing editor for the American Spectator, Jed Babin, will be here. Don't miss it.